Um, my name is Christoph Mertens. I am the head of adoption here at IDSA. Um, as such, I'm responsible for the adoption activities that the head office currently is driving. Um, but I also participate in uh, many research projects and um, I'm advisor and consultant to these research projects when it comes to um, creating an architecture that is built on trust as IDS uh, is proliferating. And uh, therefore, what we want to do today, so uh, you're aware of what will happen in the upcoming almost 60 minutes, um, we will show you um, the different perspectives from, from some of our research projects that we are involved in, but also um, the point of view from uh, someone from the industry. So um, the first presenter that we will have um, is Leon Ötzkan from the uh, Heinz Nixdorf Institute. He will show us um, the perspective on industrial marketplaces from the point of view um, of a German-funded uh, research project. Um, a detailed introduction of the um, presenters uh, will be up to you um, guys in a second. Uh, after that, um, Dr. Raimund Brechler uh, joined us from Intrasoft. He uh, also is involved with us in one research project, but on a European level where we uh, also develop a marketplace. More details on that in a second then. And um, Jürgen Brettfeld um, will, uh, as a representative of the industry, will um, give us some insights on um, the product that they're uh, building the, at the Neo Marketplace. So three different perspectives on um, the very uh, similar topic of uh, marketplaces, industrial marketplaces. And uh, all three have um, a thing in common, their architecture, as far as it is uh, developed, um, is not only aware of what IDS is doing, but they are um, also uh, building uh, on the fundaments of this uh, reference architecture to a certain degree. So the agenda, I already included it, just to let you know, uh, each uh, presentation now will be more or less 15 minutes. I would uh, kindly ask the presenters to uh, try to stick to the time, since uh, time always is running because at the end we will have at least 10 minutes um, to have a short discussion or also Q&A. Uh, so please make use of the um, question section that you can find in our tool, go to uh, webinar, ask your questions, raise your hand in case you want to uh, talk up to us and have uh, join the discussion. Um, very briefly, maybe only just to show you what this is about when we talk about IDS uh, so that you might remember the circle uh, drawing in, in later webinars or also documentations. Uh, when we talk about the IDS, the circle uh, mostly is what we refer to as the trusted um, ecosystem on which uh, things are built. Um, it conducts of uh, many different uh, things for most the connector that you might already be aware of, which is the gateway to this trusted uh, ecosystem and many, many other uh, infrastructure components. Some of them are mandatory, some of them are not. Um, but I leave uh, the reading and the details uh, to you or to other webinars also. Um, what is important here, if we talk about marketplaces, the question arises, okay, how is a marketplace positioned to uh, this um, reference architecture? And uh, one possible answer uh, is, uh, and I take this uh, up front now for, uh, before we go into the detailed um, presentations of our colleagues, um, a marketplace from our perspective could be only sort of uh, one participant of the ecosystem that is connected via its very own connector um, to the IDS ecosystem and therefore uh, can proliferate trust um, when it comes to data and applications to the customers of the marketplace. What we um, will um, face in the ne very next future once um, IDS ecosystem is not only a thing of research but a, a thing of uh, the market, um, we will uh, have a shift in how business is made. So uh, traditional marketplaces act mostly um, regardless of the domain, it could be high tech, could be plastic, could be metal, um, via standard APIs, web APIs, where the customers uh, create their account and use the services or data. Um, from the marketplace, upload their data because the marketplace itself serves as some sort of trusted party. Um, from our perspective, what will happen in the future is sort of a shift. So the more people are part of a trusted IDS ecosystem with their very own connectors, the more marketplaces uh, will have um, uh, the opportunity to 
more or less forget about uh, infrastructure components that they for the time being have to build on their own in order to create trust and uh, all of these things because the ecosystem will take care about that with its infrastructure components. So the marketplace itself can um, concentrate on what they actually want to do. They want to do uh, data by connecting data providers and data consumers. They want to do business by connecting um, service or application providers with um, those who are in search of such a, uh, a service or application. And this is what, uh, and I will just for a second go back to the uh, slide with the infrastructure components. This, these are services that are defined by the reference architecture itself. So um, marketplaces in not tomorrow or next year, but in the future might become an app store here in our ecosystem or a metadata broker uh, to deal with data or applications. This is uh, how far my explanation now uh, will go to, um, when it comes to data marketplaces. And I um, would like to encourage you to uh, rethink the circle drawing, maybe also uh, have a look at other webinars where we explain this uh, in more detail or come back to us personally. And I would like to give the floor to um, first Leon to uh, share some insights on um, KI Marktplatz, KI Marktplatz, AI Marketplace is the translation, it's a German project. And I'll leave the uh, explanation to you. Great that you're here, Leon. Um, yeah. Thank you very Stages much yours. for your short introduction. I hope you see my presentation. Is it the case? Uh, the desktop. Uh, oh, for the time being, yeah. And now the presentation. Uh, in PowerPoint, not in presentation mode, but yeah, now it's uh, on. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the uh, short introduction. The subject of my presentation is uh, the research project AI Marketplace. This project is part of the AI innovation competition founded by the Federal Ministry for Economic Affairs and Energy. Before I present the project in detail, two sentences about myself. My name is Leon Östjan, and I am a research associate at the Heinz Sixthoff Institute of the University of Paderborn. I uh, work for the chair advanced systems engineering of Professor Dumitrescu. As a part of my job, I coordinate the research project AI Marketplace. And uh, the slide is, uh, has a purpose. Uh, if you have any questions about the research project that go beyond this presentation, feel uh, free to contact me. Um, in our project, we bring together two different domains. Those domains are artificial intelligence and product creation. Our project is located at the overlap of these two domains. Uh, first, I want to explain product creation. In our project, we are primarily dealing with AI applications and product creation. We do not only understand product creation as a classical uh, product development. Our understanding of the term goes beyond this and begins with a strategic planning of a company's product. Strategic product planning determines which products a company should offer in the future and consider, consists of the tasks foresight, product discovery, and business planning. This is followed by the development of the product, which includes uh, requirements analysis and CAD design. The next step is service development. Um, here we develop complementary services. And our understanding of product creation ends um, with the production system development. So. Uh, right before the production begins. And every company must go through this process again and again when developing new products. And uh, the increasing complexity of products and the market demand for shorter development times require companies to create products uh, more efficiently. And one way to achieve this is artificial intelligence. Uh, as a result of the German government's AI strategy, artificial intelligence has become much more popular in Germany by the end of 2018. 
However, uh, the timeline above shows that AI is uh, not a new field of research and has existed for many years. Nevertheless, uh, there's currently no clear definition of the term AI, and in our project, we are using a quite broad understanding of that term. It can be said um, uh, that the aim of AI is uh, the intelligent solution of problems in the uh, clearly defined context. When the two domains, artificial intelligence and product creation, come together, we speak of AI and product creation. The companies listed here illustrate that companies already exist that offer AI solution for product creation. For example, the company Autodesk with generative design for manufacturing. Um, Autodesk enables engineers to generate design data based on parameter inputs. These parameter inputs can be uh, dimensions of products or load limits. Another example is Anodot. Um, the company Anodot uh, enables AI-based forecasting and analysis of trends um, to, uh, you know, to be able to evaluate market developments. And abstracting from these applications here, industrial companies can realize several advantages by using AI and product creation. Um, those advantages um, are, for example, you can increase development capacities, shorten development times, and reduce manufacturing costs. Um, and to be honest, the figures provided here are debatable, but uh, they do give a first indication of the possible impact. And in general, it can be said that the potential of AI applications is particularly great in knowledge intensive activities. Despite these advantages, there are also challenges. Providers of AI applications lack, for example, domain knowledge or access to data from product creation. Often the, uh, often the customer access is um, simply not sufficient. Industrial companies on the other side, um, or users of um, uh, the AI applications, they often have um, no knowledge about the potential of AI applications, and they don't have access to AI expertise. In addition, there are uncertain uncertainties uh, regarding topics such as uh, data security. And um, to enhance the potential of AI and product creation, and to overcome the challenges mentioned before, we have initiated the AI Marketplace project in the beginning of uh, 2020. This project lies in the overlap of three domains, artificial intelligence, product creation, and digital platforms. Uh, the domain digital platforms is new now because uh, we want to address the challenges by bringing together AI providers and users. Therefore, we uh, build the marketplace and uh, this marketplace has four stages of uh, development, which I will introduce in the following. In the first stage, the AI marketplace platform will bring together users and providers of AI applications using a matching algorithm. This algorithm brings together providers of AI applications based on their competence profile with potential users of these application who publish tasks on the platform. In the second stage, um, first many companies in Germany are concerned about the security of their data. And uh, therefore, we will implement a protected data space in the second expansion stage. And in this secure data space, um, our partners can improve AI applications and adapt them to customer requirements. In the third stage, we are implementing an app store on the AI marketplace. Via this app store, AI applications can be exchanged directly between provider and supplier. In doing so, we want to become the central exchange point for AI applications and product creation. In the final and fourth stage, the 
the AI marketplace will offer standardized AI modules or so-called building blocks. These are combined based on customer requirements so that the new individual AI application is created for these customers based on um, the standardized uh, building blocks. To ensure the transfer of our scientific findings into practice, several pilot projects are being carried out with our industrial partners. For example, uh, in our pilot project with Ubermetrics, Ubermetrics is a Berlin-based AI company specialized on natural language processing. And with Ubermetrics, we are implementing an intelligent product monitoring system. For this purpose, uh, the, online, the online feedback provided by customers is evaluated. And during the product cre creation process, engineers can use the findings uh, in the development of future product generations. Um, for, uh, I do not want to go into further pilot projects in detail and uh, refer to um, our homepage uh, here at the bottom line. Uh, there all proje projects are presented in detail. Um, our consortium consists of 18 organizations. We have industrial companies and research institutes as providers of AI solutions. Uh, I already mentioned Biometrics, the research institute uh, would be, for example, SciTech. Furthermore, there are several industrial companies where we're realizing AI applications and product creations, um, for example, Class or Vestaflex. The other partners here in the middle are responsible for the development of the digital marketplace for the exchange of AI applications. And all those partners mentioned here uh, are founded partners by um, the ministry. In addition to the fixed founded partners, there is still the possibility to become a partner of our project. The format is called associated partnership. This is not connected with any commitments, it can be arranged individually with us. Um, we have associated partners who only inform themselves about the progress of the project by getting uh, the newsletter or by participating in network events. Uh, however, with other partners, we are real, uh, realizing entire pilot projects, uh, for example, with uh, Ventacon. So if you are interested in participating in uh, the AI marketplace, you are welcome to do so within the framework of an associated partnership. Uh, and uh, feel free to uh, contact me. Uh, that is uh, the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Leon. Um, great. Uh, thank you for the insights on, on this uh, AI-driven uh, topic. Um, maybe not as, as a contrapoint, but in, uh, in addition to that, uh, Raimond, as uh, the next presenter, now will show us um, insights on uh, one of our research projects that uh, does not have a, have a focus on AI specifically. But uh, yeah, Raimond, what is uh, Market 4.0 all about? Okay, so can you see my screen? Yes, perfectly. Okay, the only problem is I cannot see it. Um, <laughs> okay, no, no, <laughs> I have it now. Now it works. Yeah. Screen on top of it. Okay, so thanks okay. for the introduction and thanks, Leon, for the for the nice nice presentation. Thanks a lot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I present you Market for Zero today, which is a multi-sided business platform for plug and produce industrial product service systems. And uh, let me just jump into it. And it does not do anything. Ah, okay, now it works. So let me start with the overview. And let me start from who is doing that. First of all, we are very happy that the European Commission is helping us to go into this challenge to create the marketplace. So we are in the framework of a funded Horizon 2020 project. And we committed with all these partners, 19 partners from 10 countries, and we committed within the 42 months um, where we started in 
November 2018. So we are about in month 20, around about. And what we have here as a starting point is, and I will come to it later because we want to extend our consortium. Um, we have um, a group of, of the guys that you need in order to create a marketplace and also to have the first kind of clients and service providers embedded. So we have a group of partners that are R&D academic organizations. We have simulation service providers and technology providers. We have associations, we have industrial end users, and we have software developers and ICT providers. Um, and um, these are built around three sectors. I will come to it later because we need via our associations. That's the reason why we have the associations in. We need to be connected to those ones who have the specific need to build their B2B collaboration workspace. And what is the vision of Market 4.0? Market 4.0 projects, and I will come to these projects plural, develop an open multi-sided digital platform for enabling product, production equipment and service providers to connect and work together with manufacturing companies. And it creates, and this is what we talk about today, a trust in manufacturing B2B collaboration, which is very important for the target group that we want to target. What is the marketplace design? So we have, of course, what, what you need as ingredients. You have a supply side and you have a demand side. And in order to build the glue and working space for them, we have, we have let me just change the pointer. And so we have what is a kind of a glue. We have the infrastructure and the app providers. They are building the glue and the services that connect these two players in the network. And supply side, what is it? It's production equipment suppliers that we're targeting, manufacturing on demand suppliers, engineering service suppliers, and on the demand side, uh, demand side it's manufacturing OEMs, TN, system integrators. And what, what market is doing in the middle as a marketplace is we connect, we enable players to search, you will be connected to these services here where you can test, simulate, so that fits also in this digital innovation hub uh, principle, test before you buy. So we are playing also in that league with our marketplace. Uh, we have tender and bid opportunities. You will be able to compare and to provide feedback about the product and the services. Okay, so when we talk about products and services, let me let me clarify a bit what what we are looking for and what we what we have already provided. So the glue between the two, the supply side and the demand side, is that the one side is, for example, offering a product. Yeah, and what is product? We are looking mainly for production equipment. Yeah, and everything that is connected, so every software as well, that is connected to sell or makes a deal between the two in order to sell the product. This can be machines, but also peripherals. And services, what are these services? As the control is a bit tricky. Uh, the services is everything that covers, for example, manufacturing on demand, outsourcing of services, and any other services you can think about that could be that could support the deal between these two sides. And that is, for example, engineering services, maintenance services, predictive maintenance services, and so on. And all that we do in the first stage, I will come to it again a bit later, in three different sectors, and Christoph mentioned it as well. This is metals and metal production, metal sheet production and so on, everything around plastics, injection molding and so on, and high-tech machines. Yeah, These are very demanding uh, kind of sectors because they offer a huge opportunity to cover as well a huge variety of products, but also a huge variety of services. 
And that's the reason why we focus first on those. And what is the, what is the marketplace offering? It's an e-commerce web portal. And it follows strictly the IDS reference architecture. So it's an ID, it's an industrial data space framework for trusted data exchange. It has an API for third parties to connect to a market platform. Uh, Christoph had a very nice picture for that. Yeah. And I will come in another slide on the, uh, to the architecture as well. Um, a growing number of apps to facilitate the collaboration between suppliers and customers. We have support for onboarding for new of new organizations. That is, of course, important. What is an empty marketplace? It's like, like during the COVID time where you try to buy toilet paper. It's not interesting. Yeah, it's just empty shelves. And um, and of course, integration of new apps to the market platform. We want to scale this platform. We want to scale on the supply side, on the demand side, and also on services and apps. That is very important. And this is the interface. This is the, the, the front end where you enter without seeing a lot of the stuff that is in the background going on. So um, it is a place where we do, um, where we offer a marketplace via a web portal. And it, it covers data sovereignty. It has the apps and the services, as I, did, as I explained. And it covers at the moment the three sectors that I explained. And it has online catalog, products, services, and you can search within the, uh, within the uh, databases. And these are just some examples. So you can search, for example, for specific machines and uh, you can order services of those machines. You can have um, what you see here in the bottom. We have visualization apps in order to, to go into the details of, of the machines and infrastructure. And, and this covers, of course, a wide portfolio and growing portfolio of machines and services. Let me come to uh, another way of describing what, what Christoph has had already in one of his, his slides. Um, we have, again, the players, clients, and you know, buyers and sellers, demand and, and opportunity side. Um, we have the ones that are providing services on top on. So it can, people, can be people that provide a specific simulation or specific services, which is, which is um, em, could be embedded or implemented via an app. Yeah? And they want to sell it somewhere. Yeah? And this is not so easy because we have a lot of um, fragmented solutions that are not findable by SMEs or clients. And, and then we have here our marketplace. This is market 4.0. And uh, it has all the different features that you have to have within, within a marketplace. It's a secure API, e-commerce, payment, billing, and so on and so on. I don't want to go too much in de into detail um, here. And then the important part is, you know, how do we do the connection? This goes via a market 4.0 IDS connector. Yeah, and everything is connected. Christoph explained it also as well um, via these IDS connectors, and therefore we guarantee um, that we are that we are aligned with the with the IDS reference architecture, and that we cover data sovereignty, which is one key argument um, of our services within the marketplace. Um, the uh, and what is what is the principle that we built on, and, and this trust principle. Principle, you know, we, with our project, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel again and again. You know, we have so many of those um, good solutions, and they are not connected, and and sometimes we reinvent the wheel again. So we have two different kind of 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 sales pitches within our marketplace. On one hand, this is covered by the IDS, by the international international data space, yeah, and they have the part which is data sharing and trust. So we don't reinvent that. This is covered. This was a huge amount of work and this is where we built on. On the other hand, we have our marketplace and here we put the technical trust on it. It can be um, what I explained before in the different 
sectors, we could have specific tools uh, in injection molding and so on, where we have where is a huge amount of, of solutions within the market and we can connect it, uh, for example, to another company that is selling molds and, and offer these services on top to make the sales pitch better. But now, because I, okay, I will come to an interesting part for those ones who want to be part of this um, marketplace. Uh, we have the opportunity to connect you to our ecosystem. And why do we do that? At the moment, we are at the stage where we build the marketplace. We see, we see ground ingredients, yeah? we see core that we need in order to show something and to have some, some functionality already available. So we have a core platform and we have, we have demand side covered, we have supply side covered, and we have services and infrastructure covered. All that is available. But what is a platform without scaling? What we need to do is scaling. And we want to do that with you. And you should not do it for free or you should not do it within your own costs. The European Commission offers you the possibility to join us via a sub-grant, which will be a lump sum. And the idea is that we grow our network. And what we want to do first is, in the first call, is to grow on the supply side in, um, infrastructure apps and demand side. And therefore, we have we have in total two calls, yeah, and we will invite in total 24 projects, and we will provide you with a funding from the European Commission, uh, which is 2.35 million euros of total funding. You will run experiments, and your experiment will be 12 months, and you can get up to 100,000 euro funding via a lump sum model. I do not want to go into the detail, but you will find a lot when you just Google it. It is not so complicated in uh, when it comes to reporting, but you will see all this information in the web and we will provide you also with, inf with additional information when you go on our website. Um, what we are looking for, we have two different type of projects that we will fund in call one. Number one is type A, is focusing on enlarging the supplier side of the ecosystem, is this part here. And the other side is we want to we focus on enlarging the apps that can be used to support the ecosystem. So if I put it again in back to this picture that you have a better understanding, what we want to do here is in type A, we want the connection between the supply side and the demand side and that you offer services in that area and see type B and this goes up to 100k per project and it's the focus is on including more suppliers we want to get more suppliers into this into this system in order to grow and scale and what is one of the conditions here is that we have at least three partners um, if you are a provider of apps, this is not the core focus, but it's possible. It's better if you have the core focus and you have, may have it as an add-on. But the focus here is on the demand supply side to be connected. And the Type B projects are up to 50K, 50,000 euros per project. And what we are focusing here is including more infrastructure and app providers this part. So this is what we want to have. We want to have app service providers infra infrastructure that supports the demand side. Again, also here, this is possible, can be added, but think about the budget. Yeah, this is not really the core focus of what we are looking for. Um, you still have time. You have 43 days left until you can uh, submit your proposal and in the first call, I said 2.35 and in the first call we have 1.2 million to enlarge our marketplace. And this is sector specific on plastics, metal and high-tech machines. Yeah, these are the, we opened this call 
the deadline, this is the important date, 43 days, the 30th of July, then we do all the evaluation, the contracting, and then you start on the 1st of November 2020, and you will finish your project in 31st of October 2021. In order to find all the information, yeah, and you will get afterwards also the video and you will have these presentations, please visit us here on www.market40.eu. And I would like to thank you for your attention and it was a pleasure to present you our project. Thank you. Thanks, Raimund, for these insights. Maybe one question already, um, since I know that we have uh, quite some attendance from uh, Asia. Um, yes. Who, who can be funded with uh, with these open calls? Would this be an option for people from, uh, say, for instance, Japan also? Uh, no, um, you have to be. Uh, we are. This is funding European countries, and I would, I would, um, I would appreciate uh, and link the people to our website. We have a very detailed explanation of what we are looking for. And, and who we are addressing. But the core focus here is um, to give the funding to those ones who are associated to the um, Horizon 2020 uh, project. And we are focusing on European partners. So at least good news for, for European companies here in, in the webinar. Okay, thank you, thank you Raimund. Yeah. Um, next one in the list. Um, for, um, yeah, like I said, uh, giving another perspective. So now we heard two research projects that we're involved in. I mean, uh, one last comment on Market 4.0, because what I really like about this project, as, as especially head of adoption, who thinks a lot of time about adoption, is that market has uh, the transfer from research to the market already in its DNA. And this makes it, uh, from my perspective, very special and, and interesting. Thanks again here. So um, next one would be um, Jürgen. And uh, sorry for that, uh, Ravi, I, I forgot to introduce you at the beginning, but maybe you can have a few words on, on yourself and introduce yourself uh, in a second uh, on your own. Um, Jürgen will now present us his uh, product and company and uh, stage is yours, Jürgen. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you also to the uh, great uh, presentations now we have heard. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, warm welcome from Düsseldorf. Uh, my name is Jürgen Bredfeld. I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Advaneo. And um, our company story started in 2002 uh, as a spin off of the University of Aachen with a focus of digitalization projects. Uh, for example, with, with the Deutsche Bahn, the German railway company. And um, since uh, 2017, we uh, started uh, to build up our data products in the middle of our data marketplace, which we want to present you here live. My colleague, Ravi, will present you uh, the highlights uh, of uh, the marketplace. Uh, it's too much uh, overall, so uh, uh, please uh, feel invited to join our marketplace and uh, get your own experience with it. And Ravi will us now uh, showcase some highlights of our data marketplace. We are a profit company. We are not a research project. So we have built it in the last three and a half years. And uh, we are out since uh, one month with the first uh, commercial version of our marketplace uh, for, uh, for uh, 1.0. So Ravi, please introduce us in uh, the marketplace with a live uh, impression. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Ravi Madreni. I'm working as a product owner here. Uh, let's start with a small presentation video, uh, which uh, it gives the flavors of what the data market is and other data products of Advanio data ecosystems. So let's play the video. Data is increasingly become a value enhancing asset in a company's value chain. But how can this be achieved? With three products that build on each other, Envanio offers solutions for optimization processes, innovations, or new business models. First, the Advanio data catalog internally prepares and catalogs existing data. The Advanio Trusted Data Hub allows sovereign data analysis of network providers. 
the Adveneo data marketplace offers access to the world of big data. How can a company's internal treasury of data, which often lies dormant in silos, be uncovered? And who is allowed access? Adveneo provides the solution to activate such hidden data sources. Data is activated, cataloged, and made accessible to selected user groups. The goal? Data-driven cost savings or product improvements. What opportunities are there for external cooperation between manufacturers and customers? In most cases, an economically sensible use of data between manufacturers and operators of a machine fails because of the question of data sovereignty. My machines, my data is often the objection to data transfer. One solution is provided by the following example, which can also be applied to other areas. A predictive maintenance system is extremely promising for manufacturers and operators. To do this, the operators must allow their machine data to be used by the manufacturers. This only works if strict privacy can be guaranteed. With the solution developed by FDO, the performance and service status of the machines can be read from the analysis of the incoming data. Possible malfunctions can be detected immediately or even predicted without original data or their sources being visible to third parties. The third service that Vimeo offers leads into the world of big data. What value potential can be realized, for example, from trading with one's own data? The answer is provided by the Advenio data marketplace. It is one of the first data marketplaces to be based on the reference architecture of the International Data Spaces Association, IDSA, and guarantees the standards for data security data sovereignty, and data governance defined there. Here, providers and interested parties meet to market data or find data for their own purposes. The providers make the description of their data records available, that is metadata, and provide them with rights, obligations, or license agreements. The original data remains with the data provider and is exchanged directly with the data consumer after the period of their purchase. The Advenio data marketplace also provides a unique additional service. More than 2 million open data offer a true treasure trove for all market participants, data scientists, or data experts who can find desired data records without time consuming searches. Contact us to find out how you can get the most out of your data. Find out more on Advenio. So next we can go to the highlights of uh, Advenio data marketplace. Now we have seen the basic functionality of the marketplace and some of the features that we are hinted at the video. At this point, we don't talk about uh, usual e-commerce portal features. Um, so one of the online features which, which are the available right now in the data marketplace are the data science workbench. It is used for, usually used for the easy online data processing and we integrate it with the Jupyter network. And there is a uh, concept of uh, data tons, and it is a it is a best tool for the open innovation and uh, to build the capacity building. And uh, we have this organization, which can be represented with the hierarchical users. So the organization, they can invite a number of users and they can assign different roles to the users. And there is a, another uh, uh, add-on feature we add it is called close user group. It normally enables the sharing of sensitive data within the trusted part. So we have a lot of additional features like open data. We have almost uh, 1.8 million open data items, which is crawled from nearly 46 countries. It's an open data which is available freely for the public and a lot of people can make applications on top of it. And there is another feature called discovery search, and it is for the C-level people, which normally they can easily search the data items in our marketplace. And the complete the marketplace is the uh, we have given APIs for it. That means you can search with the help of APIs. You can um, you can uh, buy the data items with the help of APIs, and it is easily integratable to all the uh, other products. So. Now, what make Advanio special? So, the first thing is it's a first marketplace live uh, for the with the help of IDS connector. That means uh, on top of that, we have a developed a functionality of connecting of multiple data sources as well as to communicate with the marketplace application for the seamless integration. 
So in the next uh, few minutes, I can show the live connector, how it works and uh, other features of the connector, what we customize it. And the second uh, advantage is it's a one ecosystem for collaborating data-driven projects. That means uh, the data marketplace provide a complete ecosystem of your collaborative data-driven projects. It offers functionality to search, offer, exchange, govern, and process data in one solution. Um, and then we can go to the third part. It's an internal ontology and data model based on idea standards. So first, uh, we are the, um, as I said, we are the ready use of the marketplace, which the internal data model is based on ontology of the idea standards. So it's completely compatible with the idea standards. And um, that means that the marketplace and that your data projects are easily connectable with every other application following idea standards. And the fourth point is the truly open cross domain and international usage. That means uh, following the idea standards also means using only handling the metadata. The abstract layer allows the marketplace to handle all data independent of the format, size, and category. And also we integrated with uh, different languages because it's an international uh, data marketplace. So we have almost 16 different languages that I can demo in the live demo. So what are the projects? Uh, we are also having a few research projects which are running the real world use cases. The first project is the Rail Connect project. This is the project that data marketplace and the trusted data of the other product as a basic of an ecosystem for managing free capacity of the railway fleet uh, transport. It is a research funding project. Uh, and the second project is the FabOS. It is one of the biggest funding projects in the, uh, in the Germany, and it enables ideas based data exchange for data driven industrial production operating systems. And we recently completed one project called Demand, and it's also integrated with the marketplace in multiple use cases of data economics and also uh, management of the data driven businesses. So what is our outlook for the future? So we want to focus more on the AI part of uh, AI part of data-driven solutions. That means uh, we want to take a lot of uh, data sets and also the algorithms and also uh, the AI training uh, data models. So we want to put all this application and also the data sets in our marketplace so that it will be useful for the consumers to run their training models and everything and um, in the near future we want to do this uh, datatron events uh, actually we plan uh, before that and uh, right now in the current situation we are not able to do that so in the datatron events we want to do some uh, primarily thing about the capacity building and open innovation through it and um, this is the most important thing what we are doing research on it it's called the data pricing so this is the, one of the biggest problem in all the data marketplaces that means uh, uh, when the provider want to put their own data in the make marketplace, they don't know how, what is the price of the data or what is the value of the data. So we are writing a research algorithm, which is we talk with a lot of industrial chains and um, getting a conclusion and we are building this pricing algorithm so that it will give you uh, a range of price where you can sell your data. Like example, if you want to sell your production data, it will give a range depending upon the categories or depending upon the parameters what you used. So I will go to the live demo of the data marketplace because it's completely live and it is open for the public from the past one month. As you see here, this is the marketplace and um, I will share you the link after the presentation. And here you can see there is a in the home page you can see that there is a lot of uh, search criteria. Example here you can see a lot of uh, uh, categories and also the data items which is freely available in the market. And um, when I open some of the data items here and you can see the details of the metadata because we don't uh, want to share the raw data between uh, the parties if there is a paid data items. And, and the interesting thing is that there is a language translation. If the person is cannot understand the, some specific language, they can easily translate the language into their uh, own languages. 
example, if I translate the language into Japanese, uh, I can able to get this one. And I hope uh, it's 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 normally it's a good translation which is provided by the Google. And somewhat we need to upgrade it. Uh, uh, and we, we, if we need some feedbacks, it's good for us. And uh, uh, when I go to the other options, what we have, it's called, um, uh, you can upload your data sets manually and also you can upload uh, your uh, data sets via API. And there is an, another option called the discovery, I told you is it's for CPL level. And um, the workbench concept, once you uh, once you get the data here, then we can easily upload the data into the workbench and you can do the analysis on top of it. Example, I have a data item here, and if I want to uh, if I want to add the data item to the workbench, I can easily add the data item to it. Like this example, if you see here. And I can click add to the workbench and then you need to accept the license and the data item is added to the workbench and then you can do your uh, writing the code in the either in the Python or R or Yulia and in future we are adding many more script scripting languages into it and uh, it's a full text search you can search freely uh, with the, your own language that means uh, the guy comes from the Arabic or Japanese or other people they can search with their own language and automatically all the translation will take there in the background and it will use the data items and we implemented the data recommendation system with the help of the machine learning algorithms so that it will use the appropriate uh, scoring of the data items and it will show for the recommendations what you want to show for and while coming to the connector part, uh, this is the connector, which is the base connector from the ideas, and we customize it according to our needs. The first thing is when the data provider come to the connector, they will click uh, to create a data source, and they can select which data type they want. We integrated these data types, nearly eight data types, and once you created a data source, then it will be, then the data set will be created in the marketplace, and then once the consumer buys the data item from the marketplace, the request will come to the panel of this uh, connector and we uh, as a provider, he should approve it. Once it is approved, the payments and the clearing house, all these mechanisms will be done. And then the data item will be transferred from provider connected to the consumer connected directly. So that the, as a broker instance, the marketplace does not uh, see or hold any raw data in our premises. We just uh, need a metadata and the raw data will be transferred directly from um, connector to the connector. So let's go to the other interesting product what we have. It's called a trusted data hub. It's also, it's, it's called a privacy preserving multi-party competition tool. So normally we have a lot of problems in the industry like a lot of companies, they don't want to share the data between their competitors, but end of the day, they want the results between the collaboration effort of all the companies. So in this case, we are building in a product, it's called innovative security with the help of innovative security systems. It's a hardware and software product. So it combines the version or visions of Ideas Trust and also the Gaia projects, which is the infrastructure project building in Germany. So I think you can see the comparisons of the types of techniques, what is there in the market. It's called a trusted data, what we are building, and there is a homographic encryptions and differential privacy, and also the federated learning. And you can see what are the difference and what are the highlights you can get with this one. And the good thing uh, is this product is also completely compatible with IDS standards. That means when you want to transfer from the connector to connector and from connected to the trusted data hub also, we integrated everything. So the complete, the products, what we are building, it's on top of the IDS reference architectures. So that's all from my side. And I will give this uh, session to Yugen so that he will conclude uh, the topic. Yeah, thank you, Ravi, very much for your presentation. Uh, it was uh, not so much time for you. I know uh, a lot of things we can't uh, present here now, but uh, feel welcome to go to our marketplace. 
at least um, we uh, uh, want to showcase how you can adapt to us and uh, can get in touch with us. We are just uh, looking for projects, uh, IDS, also GaiaX related. Uh, feel welcome to start with us at Datathon. It's like Kaggle it does uh, with uh, a competition, data driven competition, uh, and open innovation process. And last, last but not least, we are just in a farming process. So uh, when you want to collaborate with us uh, as an industrial investor, please uh, welcome, come to us, and uh, we will open you also to the other consortium of funding partners we just are discussing uh, the future of Advaneo. So thank you uh, and uh, I hope uh, we don't uh, uh, have not spent too much time. Christoph, please take now. <laughs> thank you, Jürgen.